All right, today uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to use BFD, bidirectional forwarding detection, on static routes and show you how they uh, withdraw uh, from, uh, from the routing table. And in the case of a failure, uh, I got a drawing that I'm going to pull up and just kind of show you my topology. Uh, so essentially what we have is two routers um, connected via a switch and um, you know, essentially we have no dynamic routing at all. Uh, we're just using static routes to basically reach the loopbacks of each of the routers. Now we know that this is one of those cases that um, kind of the worst case scenario where you have uh, two routers that are connected with with some sort of mediary in the middle. In this case it's an Ethernet switch. Now if one of the ports were to go bad or a cable come unplugged or uh, the other router go down, essentially um, you would just be forwarding into a black hole, right? Because uh, if, let's say if router 4 went down, then router 3 would not be able to de detect that that router was um, not online anymore with static routing and um, because he had a, a link light coming from the switch in between the two routers. So essentially any traffic destined for that specific destination, IP destination, uh, would be black holed, uh, just kind of sent off into the nether. So what we're what we're going to demonstrate is uh, I'll show you s the basic uh, configuration on both routers. Uh, router three is uh, in the window to the left, and router four is in the window to the right. I also have another window hiding behind this that will check everything when the tests are running. Uh, so we don't have to stop them and verify what's going on. Um, okay, so the first things first. Uh, on these devices, uh, I'll do a show protocol. Oops, show protocols, and you can see there's nothing configured. Uh, the BGP has been marked inactive, uh, which basically means uh, all this Juniper box is ignoring that stanza completely. And uh, show protocols. And again, on router four, we have the same thing. Uh, let's look at the uh, static routes. So we'll do uh, show routing options, uh, static, and here's our route statements. Now, um, we'll just ignore all the rest of them. What we're really interested in is uh, this route 10.033.32 that is the loopback address of router 3. The next hop is the Ethernet link between the two so uh, it's 10, the, the, the link itself is 10.024.30 uh, router 4 has dot .6 router 3 has dot .5 also to the static route, we've added the BFD liveness detection section, and um, this is a, a good minimum config. It's it's effective. It gives us um, a very targeted BFD session. Now let's look at router three. Show routing options, static. And again on router three, we basically have the reverse, right? So his static route is pointing at 1034, which is the loopback address of router 4. Uh, the next hop is the other side of the slash 30, right? So 10026. And again, we have the same uh, BFD configuration on both sides, you know, with the appropriate addresses changed. Um, if you want to check to see what's going on, it's um, run show BFD session. All right, you can see that. We're looking at the next hop, uh, 10026. It is up. And um, so we know that this is monitoring the static route. We can do uh, run show route protocol static. We'll just focus on static routes. Right? And, and if you notice, we have a static route to the loopback of router 4. And the next hop is the interface of router 4, the, the direct connect on the other side of the, uh, 
uh, the interconnect between router 3 and router 4. So again, router 3 has a static route pointing to router 4 for his loopback and vice versa from router 4 to router 3. Now let's look at router 4, run show BFD session. All right, we're up. And I can also look at the static routes, run show route protocol static. And again, here's the route in the route table for uh, router 4 pointing to router 3's loopback address. Now, now for the quick testing, I'm going to begin by saying um, run ping 10, 0, 0, 3, 4. So I'm going to ping from router 3 to router 4 the loopback address. All right, so we start our, our ping, and uh, we've got connectivity. Everything looks good. I mean, our routing tables look good. Uh, but what we need to do now is break the cable, right? So in order to do that, I'm going to do it in a really simple method, and that is to uh, disable the link between the two on router 4 only, right? So we'll look, and we'll still see link, on the router 3 side, but router 4's link will be down. Uh, set interface. No, oh, wrong window. <laughs> All right, set interface. Uh, Giggy 000, it's unit 40. And I'm going to say disable. Now nothing happens until I commit, so I'll go ahead and commit that. All right. And as soon as the commit completes, there we go, the uh, interface is down and we have a no route to host. Uh, essentially, a no route to host means we don't have a route going to the destination. And I'm going to pull up the other window. It's right in between here. So if we look at router 3, again, I'm, this is a secondary window that, so we can look at each without uh, disrupting the output. Uh, I'll say um, show interface terse giggy zero zero zero. All right. If we look, my link is up on all the giggy zero 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 uh, interfaces and sub interfaces. I'm going to switch this over to router four, and we can look at the th same thing. Run. Oops, not a run. Just show interface terse. I spell right. Giggy zero 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 zero. 0. Okay, so while the physical interface is up, um, we notice that the um, sub interface for 40, which is the one we disabled, is down. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at the routing table. We'll start with router 4 since we're on that console. Um, show route protocol static right, and if you notice uh, we're missing the route pointing back to router 3's loopback now this is not because BFD um, detected it I mean that's part of it but really when you have an interface that goes down the router will automatically withdraw everything that is pointing to or out of that interface. If we, I'm going to switch over to router 3 and we'll do the same thing. Show route protocol, ugh, protocol static. Um, and if you look at the static routes, we're missing the 10034 static route which is pointing over to router 4's loopback address. So show BFD session. Uh, BFD is down. Um, and that's what actually detected the failure and withdrew the route from the route table. Uh, in router 4, we can look at the same information. Run, sh I gotta quit doing that. Show BFD session. And you notice that uh, Essentially, <laughs> there is no BFD session, right? And the reason why there's no BFD session is the interface is down. So just like we, the, the router withdrew 
the static route, it also withdrew or did not enable BFD because they're associated with the interface that is, that is uh, downed, admin down in this case. Um, all right, I'll switch back to our configuration screen. And what we can do is re-enable the interface. And uh, we should see it come back, and then all the BFD sessions will be active. Uh, now in Juniper, we have the rollback statement. Show pipe compare. Rollback 1. It's just a good way to verify that when you roll back, you're not going to change something that um, was previously <laughs> needed in your config or not needed for that case. So uh, disable was the only thing that was added. So I can simply say rollback 1. It rolls the config back, which removes the disable. Go ahead and commit. And router 3 will start pinging here in just a second. And there we go. Um, if we look, I'm going to bring up my third window that we're using for testing. Um, at this point, if I look at the BFD session, you'll notice that BFD is once again active on router 4. And it's monitoring the static route, right? Because that's where we configured it. We configured it under static routes. Router 3, on the other hand, um, the BFD session was always enabled but it was in the down state. So if we look at it now that everything's been restored, the, um, the session is now up, the state is up for the BFD, and uh, we can look at the routing table to show you how those came back. So on router three, uh, sh show route terse. Oh, that's not what I want to do. <laughs> look at the, the static routes, all right? So, um, show route protocol static. All right, our static route has reappeared in the route table. And we'll see the exact same output on router 4. And there it is, 10.033. So the, loop, the static route to the loop back is also active on router 4. Um, the key to BFD on static routes is you have to have a BFD session configured on both sides. Um, so if I have a static route on one side and I want it to uh, be monitored and talk to a router, um, you know, the next hop router, then what I have to do is also configure BFD on the secondary router. So I'll get my picture up to, for visual uh, explanation. So if router 3 has a static route to router 4 and I want to protect that static route with bidirectional forwarding detection then router 4 must also have a static route that is configured with BFD right because that's what enables the, the, the daemon inside of the router to start listening to BFD packets. It doesn't listen to them automatically. Um, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, this is BFD uh, configured on static routes uh, for protection in a scenario like this or other scenarios. Um, you know, use your imagination. I'm, it's, a, it's a pretty handy thing to have.